Hello, this is uh, Pastor Moss of Living Word Church, and I want to thank you for tuning in. And uh, if you have any questions about the ministry, you can contact me personally at Pastor Moss at BellSouth.net. Pastor Moss at BellSouth.net, or you can go to livingwordchurch.faith and check out what we have concerning ministry. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start uh, a complete different series. And uh, this is something really uh, totally different. But I, I really believe as Christians, we do see the time approaching what's taking place. And we believe that Jesus is coming soon. And uh, we, we've heard that for many, 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 many years. But I believe that when we say he's coming soon, you look at the signs of the times the earth is travailing, things is taking place that points toward the coming of the Lord. And I want you to know that our destiny, if you know Jesus is Lord, our destiny is heaven. Matter of fact, that's what I'm going to be talking about in this one, two, and three part. You have to listen to part two, part three, because the more stuff I want to talk about, I cannot get into everything on this particular message. This is just a foundation. But I'm going to begin by uh, reading a portion from a book by Brother Hagen on I Believe in Visions. And within that book, I took a segment out. I'm going to read it to you because this is better read than just said. And I'm going to read it word for word. So uh, I believe it will bless you and get you thinking about heaven. Brother Hagen, he said, I was holding a tent revival in Rockwall, Texas during the latter part of August and the first part of September. This is 1950. As everyone was present was a Christian. I just gave a Bible lesson and then invited the folks to come to the altar to pray. We gathered around the altar around 930. Let me say here that I no more expected what was to follow than I could have expected to be the first man ever to land on the moon. I hadn't been doing any unusual praying or fasting. I had not been praying that I would have such an experience. In fact, I hadn't even thought about such a thing. Everyone was praying around the altar, and I knelt at the platform beside a folding chair near the pulpit. I began to pray in the Spirit, that is to pray in other tongues. While praying in other tongues, I heard a voice say to me, Come up hither. At first, I didn't realize that the voice was really speaking to me. I thought everybody heard it. Come up hither, the voice said again. Then I looked and it seemed that Jesus was standing about where the top of the tent would be. As I looked up again, the tent had disappeared. The folding chairs had disappeared. Every tent pole had disappeared. The pulpit had disappeared. And God permitted me to see into the spirit realm. Jesus was standing there, and I stood in his presence. He was holding a soul winner's crown. This crown was so extraordinarily beautiful that human language could not begin to describe it. Jesus said that the crown was for every one of his children, but they were often too busy. They put off his commands and say, Lord, I would do it that I would do that later. And souls are lost because they would not obey him. When Jesus said that, I wept before him. I knelt down and repented of my failures. Then Jesus said to me again, come up hither. It seemed that I, I went from him through the air until we came to a beautiful city. We did not actually go into the city, but we beheld it at close range as one might go up on a mountain overlooking a city and looked down on the city in the valley. Its beauty was beyond words. Jesus said that people say they are ready for heaven. They talk about their mansions and about the glories of heaven, while many all around them are in darkness and have no hope. He said, I should share my hope with them, invite them to come with me. And then another part of, of the testimony he said, I saw Jesus standing again about where the top of the tent should be. And I went to him through the air when I reached him. 
Together we continue on to heaven. This is another part of the vision. We came to the throne of God and I beheld it in all its splendor. I was not able to look upon the face of God, but only beheld his form. The first thing that attracted my attention was the rainbow about the throne. It was very beautiful. The second thing I've noticed was the winged creatures on either side of the throne. They were peculiar looking creatures. And as I walked up with Jesus, these creatures stood with wings outstretched. They were saying something that I, that they ceased and folded, but they ceased and folded the wings. They had eyes of fire set all away around their heads and they looked in all different directions at once. I stood with Jesus in the midst about 18 to 24 feet from the throne. I looked at the rainbow and at the winged creature second, and then I started to look at the one who sat upon the throne. Jesus told me not to look upon his face. I could see only a form of a being seated upon the throne. Then for the first time, I actually looked into the eyes of Jesus. Many times when relating this experience, I am asked, what did his eyes look like? All I could say is that they looked like wells of living love. It seemed as if you could see a half a mile deep into them, and the tender look of love is indescribable. As I looked into his face, into his eyes, I fell at his feet. I noticed then that his feet were bare, and I laid the palm of my hands on the top of his feet and laid my forehead on the backs of my hands, weeping. I said, O oh Lord, no one as unworthy as I should look upon your face. Jesus said that I should stand up right on my feet. I stood up. He called me worthy to look upon his face, for he has called me and cleansed me from all sin. Then Jesus goes on and talks about Brother Hagin's ministry. If you'd like to uh, get a hold of that book, contact Rama and uh, ask for the book, I Believe in Visions. You will be truly blessed by reading that book. And, and then in my personal time of meditating, you know, I believe that God can speak to you and show you things in your quiet time. I have quiet times with God in those quiet times. I ask him to give me, uh, give me words that will encourage people. Give me words of information, words of inspiration that will encourage people. And so in my quiet time with God, I had a word about heaven. And this is called, this is, this is a word of inspiration that I've written. This is called, What is Heaven Like? Heaven is an ex in, in exceedingly, abundantly above man's comprehension to perceive. Everything in heaven is overflowing with life and such beauty to see. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither the things that God has prepared. It is above man's imaginations to comprehend the splendor that is there. Everything and everyone is glowing with life in the light of God's glory. God has allowed a few to see a glimpse of his beauty to tell others their story. God is the light of the city and there is much to enjoy and to behold. Everything is bright and radiant while the streets are glistening with pure gold. Everything there is for your pleasure. There will be plenty of things to see and to do. All the families who have gone on before will be there waiting for you. In heaven, you can travel at a speed of thought and go anywhere you want to be. Or you can just walk or even jog to enjoy the scenery and the beauty that is there to see. Mountain trails, a river of life, a crystal sea near the throne, and much more to view. You'll never see it all because heaven is a place that has more than enough to do. In heaven, you will see walking trails, valleys, flowing streams of water that are crystal clear. Animals are there. They are peaceful and gentle, lions and other four-legged creatures, and even deer. You will see trees with leaves swaying back and forth with life. 
and joyful praise. The greenest grass that you've ever seen are joining in with music of worship upraised. As you look in another direction, there is a field full of flowers that are of many colors. There is a mist among all the flowers, brightly shining among them with a glistening color. The sky is dark blue, is not like the earth, for it is beautiful without a sun. All of heaven is full of the glory and light. There is no darkness, for there is none. Things that you have seen on the earth are duplicated in heaven with total improvement. Communication to know where the families are, you'll, be, you'll have spiritual insight on their movement. The food that you have eaten on earth cannot be compared to heaven's food and taste. When you eat heaven's food, you enjoy its flavor in a body that will never produce waste. You'll have no internal, internal organs working in your body or a flowing of internal blood. You will be eternal and will never die because life is flowing in the glory of God's love. There will be no more death, sickness, disease, pain, sadness, discouragement, or mental decay. The devil and demons that have brought destruction to mankind has been taken out of the way. Heaven is more than a dream, a fairy tale, or a fantasy world where there is no grace. Jesus described it as his father's house with many mansions, for heaven is a real place. It is an active place where you will see your loved ones and friends that you have known. Rewards will be given to many of the saints because of the seeds that they have sown. The greatest news in heaven is when you finally see Jesus who knows you by name. That is when you can truly say, I am now home in heaven and my family has totally, and my life has totally changed. If you'd like to have a copy of this written information that I, the Lord gave me, just email me at pastormoss at and Say, Pastor Moss, could you send me a copy? of that uh, word of inspiration on the facts of heaven, uh, what is heaven like, and I'll be glad to send it to you. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thy seed, you and your seed shall live. He said, I'll call heaven to set this day that I have set before you life and death. People say that God sent people to hell because he rejected these people. God don't reject nobody. They rejected him. These people rejected Jesus, would not receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. So therefore, heaven a place that soon we'll all be going. Remember the old song, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. You know, you can sing and shout victory right now. You can eat your pie in the sky, but I'm going to eat my steak on the plate while I wait because I believe that Jesus is coming. I believe he's coming soon. Heaven is a real place. As a matter of fact, John's gospel, gospel chapter 14, verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. If you are a child of God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But if you die today without knowing Jesus as your Lord, you cannot and you will not go to this place 
called heaven. I have another message that I will be getting into, but not now, on the facts about hell. A lot of stuff about hell that maybe you hadn't thought about. But if you know God, you're a Christian, you ain't going to hell. Thank God for that. So in Thanksgiving times, I'm thankful that I'm not going to hell. I'm thankful that I'm going to heaven. Heaven is a real place. Amen. It's a beautiful place. Next of all, heaven is a place of unimaginable joy. Heaven is a place of eternal joy and fellowship with Jesus Christ and all the righteous. You know, the Bible says, Thy words was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. And one of the fruits of the Spirit God has given us is joy. But I tell you what, once we get to that place called heaven, you talk about joy unspeakable and full of glory, no more sin, no more sickness, no more disease, no more clocking in, going to work, <laughs> no more sleeping at night, no more being tired and weary, no more walking in faith. I mean, you are in that place that you always dreamed of. But if you are a child of God, the Bible said, looking for that blessed hope and the great appearing of this great God. Jesus is coming again, coming again. Now, I've got so much more I want to get into about heaven. So be sure to tune in my next message on part two on, on facts about heaven and what is heaven like. So I'm going to go and close, but I've got so much to get into. And, and I'd rather go ahead and do part two in my next uh, message. So be sure to uh, have others to tune in and um, on, on heaven. And again, if you'd like to have a copy of, of, of these words of inspiration about heaven, I'll be glad to send it to you. Amen. And uh, uh, we love you and God bless you. And so if we don't see you in heaven before my next message, we love you. God bless you. And shalom. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.